Hi, I'm John, the banking systems engineer at Termel. And in a 1983 article titled Abuse of Process in the Foreclosure of Mrs. Jean Metcalf, the Allergy Victim, it said that Mrs. Metcalf snarled the Bank of Montreal's repossession action in the courts for months with the enthusiastic assistance of Ottawa bank fighter extraordinaire John Termel. Well, I'm going to explain how not only was it my duty to reprogram the malfunctioning software at the bank's computers, but it was also my duty to help the victims if at the same time I could turn them into weapons against the malfunction, which I did. So, upcoming are some foreclosure cases and how Jesus would have argued your foreclosure fight, okay? So, these were the instructions for my anti-foreclosure kit and that's what I call my stiff the bank kit. And everybody use the Jesus defense, which is give to Caesar what is Caesar's, the principle. But like the not slothful servant, stiff him for the interest. So the kit includes all the forms needed to fight foreclosure in Ontario. And the affidavit of the banking systems engineer, an expert in matters related to gambling. Your major goal in all these proceedings is to get to examine the bank manager under oath and get him to admit that mortgages are gambles. You must never write on the master forms and only use them to reproduce others. You must print all information. They should first go to the Justice of the Peace and lay an information that your bank manager is the keeper of a common gaming house. This will prove to me that you can fight your bank without getting into trouble and will prove it to you too. So you should hand a copy in of the affidavit of the banking systems engineer to the Justice of the Peace. It will be used over and over in all your appeal cases. The wording of the charge is that the bank manager, quote, unlawfully did charge an interest fee for the privilege of participating in the death gamble, mort gage, in violation of section 197 1B3 of the criminal code, making him keeper of a common gaming house. And of course, we've also added the mort section, the genocide charge in later actions. So the forms, well, the numbers of the forms correspond to the sections in the Ontario Rules of Practice. Form 1802B was a notice of intent to defend, and this form is filed and served on the 20th day after service of the statement of claim. It gives you an extra 10 days to file a statement of defense and of course everybody was trying to stall and get maximum time now. Form 2701 statement of defense and counterclaim. This is filed because you want a counterclaim for the interest they weren't supposed to take. And for a lot of people that means some money back. So notice a motion to strike the statement of claim. Notice a motion to determine an issue before trial if you needed that. Notice a motion to set aside a default judgment if you were at that stage already and the cops were at the door almost. Then a defendant's affidavit where you explain that, that you understand the mortgage is a death gamble and you swear the oath honestly that you think your mortgage was a gamble which made the bank a gaming house in violation of the criminal code which is higher than the interest. Act. And then Form 2103, the factum, just two pages, used in all the motions. Then the record covers. Then notice a constitutional question. Then the notice of intent to act in person. The affidavit of service and the affidavit of facts service. So, now depending on time, by the 20th day from receipt of the statement of claim, you must serve and file Form 18, the notice of intent to defend. By the 10th day after that, you must serve and file the statement of defense, made up of the statement of defense, the statement of defense back. You must also serve Form 41, the notice of constitutional question, and mail copies to the Attorney Generals, even though you don't have a date yet. It opens a file in your name. You should send them notice of every hearing that takes place. If you had a lawyer, also serve Form 1503, Notice of Intent to Act in Person. So, motion records. This is how you build them. Record, cover, index, blah, 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 in order. Then, motion to set aside a default judgment. That's for people who are late. This is the big one. When there's already a judgment against you to reopen the suit, you prepare a record using this form as your notice of motion. Make sure to let the sheriff know that the default judgment is being challenged challenged in his office as a, you know, has a writ of possession against you. File a copy with him if necessary. Very few sheriffs will dare evict when a judge still has say on the matter. Then there was a motion to determine an issue before trial. And then there was service of documents and how you went about doing that. And many people in Ontario used my stiff the bank kits to stall their foreclosures until they eventually sold their houses or something good happened. 
The Foreclosure of William Devick Cherry and His Family, 1982. And that's a picture of him over there with the bailiffs at the door at one point. And I first heard about it in an article titled Memories All Family Has Left by Jane Tabor, citizen staff writer, Ottawa. Memories of a better life sit on the front lawn of the Devicherry home. They're for sale. William and Susan Devicherry must leave their home of 19 years. The bank has foreclosed on their mortgage. Outside is Breeze Hill Avenue home, beside the old taxi meter that uh, hung up the fares when David Cherry was an Ottawa cabbie, beside the paintings, tires and tools are signs. Printed in black magic marker, they complain the foreclosure by the Bank of Montreal is non-human. David Cherry's problems began in earnest in November when he realized he couldn't pay the 30000 he'd borrowed in time. But the root of the provinces goes back to 1978. Four years ago, the Quebec government expropriated a section of land he owned on his restaurant, tore it down, and then didn't give him enough money to cover his debts. His problem. I am completely cleaned out financially, he says. I don't even have a house anymore and I can't get an apartment because we don't have a good credit rating. Jack Bowman, manager of the Rideau Street Bank of Montreal, says he feels sorry for the family, but his hands are tied. In this day and age, these are the kinds of things that happen. He's not a successful businessman, and he lost out. He owes us the money. Bowman said David Cherry's lived in the house since January without making any of the $200 monthly payments. The unfortunate part is that he waited until the last hour to do something about it, and we tried our best and did everything we could to get him in the bank to talk to us. But we just could he just couldn't, wouldn't. Yeah, talk, you got no money. What do you want to talk about? David Cherry said he won't leave until his money comes from the Quebec government. Yeah, yeah, dream on. Quebec transportation officials says they offered him some for the property, but he rejected it because it wasn't enough. So then, 27th of August, 1982, Constitution cited in mortgage case. He took one of my stiff the bank kits, arguing that foreclosing on his mortgage violates his rights under the Constitution, and Ottoman Land has filed notice to appeal the action. William Devicherry, 52, was told he would have to leave his Breeze Hill Avenue home by, grant, by August 19th, when the Bank of Montreal was granted possession by the courts, after he couldn't pay a $30,000 loan due last January. Devicherry will remain in his home while the Supreme Court of Ontario considers his appeal request. The motion argues the foreclosure violates the right to life as guaranteed in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and the Charters guarantee that an individual has the right not to be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment. The Bank of Montreal's lawyer Stanley Kirschman refused comment. Bank of Montreal manager Jack Bowman also refused comment. So, anyway, at a certain point on uh, December the 8th, the bank moved on the writ of possession even though a notice of appeal had been filed and they were in there and I showed up with the proof of the notice of appeal having been filed and I was saved by an officer I believe it was Cleary but anyway here's the story homeowner fights off bailiff an angry William Devicherry pursues officials attempting to evict him so by Kelly Egan. A Breeze Hill Avenue man saddled with mortgage foreclosure on his home fought back with a legal punch of his own Wednesday when he fended off a bailiff and bank lawyer trying to take possession of his house. The officials were attempting to carry out a sheriff's order for William Devicherry, his wife Susan, one of the two children, to vacate the bungalow. While the front door locks were being changed, however, Devicherry scrambled to obtain a document for the bailiff, saying the foreclosure on his home was still before the courts. A lawyer for the Bank of Montreal Montreal agreed to give the 52-year-old man two options, vacate in one week or pay 600 in monthly rent until the case comes before the court, probably in February. Remember that. He made an offer for rent. David Cherry, who says he can't follow either option, is attempting to get legal advice before the week of grace is up. Got a week now. On November 29th, a judge adjourned my appeal to divisional court, and a date hasn't been set for that yet. As far as I can see, until that's settled, it must be enforced over the order to vacate, he said Wednesday during an interview in his home. When Devicherry's plight was detailed in the citizen story in August, bank basher John Termel became his ally. Termel has since aided Devicherry in having the case bounce from one court to the next. It was Termel, in fact, who produced a copy of the November 29th decision for the unemployed former restaurant owner. I 
lost my restaurant. I lost my land. I lost all my money and now I'm losing my house. I don't know what to do next, he said. With Termel's help, David Cherry tried to set aside the judgment for immediate possession of the house granted to the bank earlier this year. That motion was dismissed. A motion to set aside a default judgment. It's one of the forms, you know. During the November appeal hearing, the Supreme Court of Ontario justice ruled the case was in the wrong forum and adjourned it to the divisional court. Termel says the case will be heard in February. Well, eventually, the case had a happy ending. Mr. Devacherry finally managed to sell the house, pay his debts, and keep a little equity.